This video is sponsored by Avail. Are you a HGV driver looking for a job? If so, then create and log into the Avail app and start looking for work. Want to know more? Then download the Avail app today. Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Luke, thank you very much for watching, do appreciate it. Just grabbing my app. Uh, right, first and foremost, recording on my new phone. I've got an iPhone 15 Pro Max. Don't know whether the quality is going to be any different or not. Don't know. Let me know. Um, We've just been loaded um, in Marshalls and Froome. We've got to go strap it all up now. So let's jump out and uh, I'll show you what we've got on. It's a bit of, uh, well, it's a bit of all sorts, really. So we've got these, uh, like, concrete things. Don't know what you call them. Three there, two there, two there. we got some here, some there, some there. And then on the ass end, we've got uh, some tubes. Okay, that's been nailed in. So, um, yeah, we're going to have to crisscross them as well. Crisscross that one. So I'm just, uh, this is the first time I've seen it myself, the load. So I'm just in my head sort of going over how I'm going to strap it up. So, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Maybe, maybe 16 straps, I don't know, we'll see. I might get away with just one strap over these. I don't know, let's start strapping up anyway. So I'm just looking at the paperwork. The heaviest thing we have is 1.2 tonnes, which I think is that. Those there are like slab covers and they weigh 600 kilograms each, according to the paperwork. Um, and they're four high. So that's like 2.4 tonnes, 2.4 tonnes. And then there's five there. Oh, but one of them is a heavy one, a big one. Let me have a quick look. Yeah, so I think I'm going to do two straps over the front one, two straps over there two straps and then I think I'm gonna go one strap one strap one strap and then crisscross the back two I think that's what we're gonna do right situation report so I've decided to put two on each one basically two on every single one so two four six eight ten twelve straps so far I've not done these up yet because I've just been told there's stuff missing and apparently it's quite tall I've got space for it um, don't know how tall it is because ideally I want it on the headboard, which means I now might have to <laughs> undo stuff. Um, I'm hoping they just either leave, put it on the back and it's not too tall, or they just move these, put them at the back, and then put something in between. I don't know. Right, we are getting other stuff put on. You can't really see because the window's a bit wet. It's going to a place called Hebburn and we are six and a half hours away. If we were to leave now, we'd get there at 20 to eight. We actually don't need to deliver it until eight o'clock in the morning. So we don't have to get mega close. Um, but yeah, it's all the way up here by Sunderland. So it's a long well, gate's head basically. Um, so I may, I may work late and drive all the way up. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see how I feel. Or I may park up somewhere. I got um, park saving here. This is Diner 51, it's a shell garage. So I may park up there. Um, which is about an hour away. So I can always park up there and then start again at seven in the morning. And um, yeah, we'll be there well after half seven. We're gonna have to get a break in as well on the way up. So I don't know, we'll see. All we know is that we've got to get strapped up and make our way up. That's that's for sure, that's for definite. So, um, yeah, we'll get this stuff put back on and then uh, we'll go back to the area and, uh, and strap up the rest of it. Okay, we are almost done. We've used an awful lot of straps. Good job I got spare ones. But I need a hammer. Where are you? There you are. There you are. I need your... Right, okay. Let me just explain what I've done. So this... This one here, I can only do forward that way because they've got that over there. So I've just put a plank of wood in and uh, banged the nails in enough that it literally holds the piece of wood in. I um, don't want to go too far in because uh, I need to get them back out. <laughs> um, so one more shot to do up. Because um, like I said, this one we can do both ways, but this one we can't. So that's there to stop it from going backwards. And even if it did go backwards, it's not going to go far because that's there. Okay, finally strapped up. Maybe used too many straps, who knows? Like I said, thank God I've got extra. So I put two over that first lot because it's quite high. 
put two over that because it's quite heavy two over that maybe could have done with just one over that maybe i reckon i definitely could have done with just one over these two uh, sorry these three um but obviously i already strapped up so already we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve then we've got two on this one so that's 13 14 we've got 15 which is the one that goes through the other one on the other side 16 17 18 19 20 21 we've got 21 straps um a little bit cautious about that being on the back end but it should be okay the whole load is heavy so it's not gonna be like a case of a lot of weight on the back like when there's a lot of weight on the back you can sort of feel it twisting up the back i don't think we're gonna have too much problem yes it's a little bit tall but it's no taller than what's on the front um i think we'll be okay so yeah 21 straps what do you think is it overkill or would you have done the same would you have done one on each of these what would you have done the truck is filthy this place it always gets dirty in this place but to be fair it never got washed over the weekend so yeah not a lot we can do about it but yeah there's the load right let's go grab our paperwork right we're loaded we're strapped we've got paperwork just going to quickly head out the gate because I've got a lorry behind me waiting to get parked where I was so we can get a grab, ugh, go grab his paperwork. Just going to pull outside the gate a sec, sort some bits and bobs out. Uh, so yeah, we've been here quite a while. Um, we got here at 11 o'clock this morning. We had, we had another job this morning to do first. Got here at 11 o'clock. Current time is nearly two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, so three hours, three hours. I'm well, just going to put the hazards on, but uh, that's part of the job. You can't always uh, be finished early. Got a seat going up so we can put the hard, hard hat away. That can go down again. High vis can come off. Fold it away nicely. Seat belt on. Right, hazards off, beacons off. Let's go. So yeah, like I said, we've been here a while. Uh, weather has mostly been raining, mostly, but actually when we've needed to strap up, um, it's been relatively dry, so not too bad. My hands are dirty because my gloves have got wet and dirty, so now my hands are dirty, so I need to buy some more gloves somewhere because both pairs of my gloves are, uh, are wet and dirty. And I find that when they're wet and dirty, they just make your hands dirty. So, yes, we'll have to go. We'll have to, when we stop somewhere for a break, because we will need a break somewhere on the way up. We'll go um, clean up and stuff like that. I haven't got time to do it there. I've got to get a move on. Get a move on. Let's go around this corner. I've got a bridge. Don't really want to be meeting another truck around this bit. Oh, I'm going to go a bit slower, mate. That car is not that far away from me in my trailer. <laughs> naughty, naughty. Um, so, yeah, we're, um, I don't know what to do like with regards to where to park up tonight. We're, we obviously just want to get up a fair few miles. Uh, to total distance um, from our delivery point is 313 miles. Um, so we want to get up as far as we can. But then also, we don't need to be there till 8 o'clock in the morning. So, you know, I don't want to... It's difficult. I can either get right on the doorstep pretty much, but then finish late tonight. Um, or we can park up earlier and then do a little bit more driving in the morning. Obviously, I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow, so I don't... Normally, I'd account for driving time, so if I need driving time tomorrow, then I'd obviously get up as far as I can today. On that basis, you'd be like, oh, well, you should probably just get as far as you can anyway. <laughs> but I've also got to take working time into consideration as well. I need nine hours off. Uh, ideally, 11, really. Um, and also I started at 6 this morning so I can only work until 9 o'clock things like that I've got to take breaks into consideration as well so um, yeah got to, got to think about the future someone did say on my last video that, or the last video that I uploaded anyway um, that I seem to worry and stress a lot about where I'm parking and where I'm getting to and things like that I wouldn't say it's stressing it's things you've got to think about I would say there's no point not thinking about it because then it'd just be a complete surprise 
when you get there and you know you've, you've in my opinion you've got to think about where you're parking up and how many hours you've got left and in the morning and stuff, stuff like that otherwise you're gonna get infringements and you don't want infringements so yeah it's a difficult one um i would imagine the next time you see me i would imagine it's going to be dark because although it's quite light now it is like i said two o'clock in the afternoon it gets dark at four o'clock which is only in a couple of hours and um we're on two and a half hours driving time now so we've only got a couple of hours driving time before we need to stop for a break um even though i've been in there for three hours i've been moving around so i haven't actually had a break so i've got to got to stop for a half an hour break somewhere on the way up and then hopefully after that break we can then just continue carrying on the rest of the way just trying to think yeah it's not going to work out ideal for me because i need that break within the next two hours of driving time and it's two o'clock now which means around four-ish maybe just before four-ish more than likely is when i'm gonna have to stop for a break and um by the time i finish that break it's going to be uh, nearly rush hour traffic so i'm going to be in the thick of it going up i think but not a lot we can do about that anyway i'm going to stop rambling on uh if you haven't already noticed this video is going to be over a couple of days for me so we are going to be doing a night out tonight and then uh, tomorrow morning we'll do the delivery to the building site. I haven't even looked at the site yet. That's stuff I can do tonight once I've parked up and found somewhere to park for the night. Um, it's going to Barrett Homes. That's all I know. Phase three. <laughs> that's all I know. So I'm going to crack on and I will see you later on when it will probably either be dark or getting dark. See you in a bit. Right, we have literally just parked up. Like literally just this second just parked up. Um... I can hear a fridge, but never mind. There's not a lot we can do. <laughs> um, someone in my last video said you should never just turn off your engine after driving long distances. Look, I totally agree with you. However, it's quarter to eight at night. I'm in a service station with trucks either side. The engine's got to come off, man. If I was in bed at eight o'clock at night and a lorry pulled up next to me and left his engine on, wouldn't be best pleased. I know it's part of the job, but you know, you can't do it sometimes anyway we finally parked up so we've been driving for four hours pretty much since i had my break earlier at the service station which was michael wood services wasn't it for four hours straight since i last saw you uh, and we are also on eight hours 44 minutes worth of driving so we've only got 15 more minutes of worth of driving um before we reach a nine hour so we pretty much are at our maximum unless we go into a 10. in terms of uh where we are parked so Diner 51 is this um, one up here, which was another 30 minutes away. Like I said, I didn't think I was going to make it, and yeah, so I've only got 15 minutes left and half an hour left, so I didn't really want to go into a 10. So here we are. We are at, is it, I think we're at Weatherby. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're at Weatherby service station. We need to go and pay for parking. Um, and we're an hour and a half away for my delivery point for the morning. So it's pretty good. It's um, quarter to eight now. We don't need to start until about half past six in the morning. So that's all good. I'm now gonna jump out of the truck, do some uh, end of day checks, and then we need to go pay for parking, and then we can go and rest. Yes, of course. I parked right next to a bloody puddle, and now my foot is soaking wet. Nice. <clears throat> okay, so. Just checking the load, make sure it's still all on. It's all looking good. All the straps are on still. Tires are inflated. Nothing's moved, as far as I can tell. Oh, that one needs to be done up a bit. And that one. So yeah, we'll go around now and uh, make sure all the straps are done up. Can't believe I jumped out of the truck. <laughs> and put my foot right into a puddle. Right, let's go do a wall up now this side. Do that one up. And uh, make sure all these are tight. good right okay now we've got to go and uh, 
pay for parking. Right, just been and paid for parking. Walking back to the truck now. I'm gonna bought myself a strawberry milkshake. Just really fancy milk right now. <laughs> Random, I know. So yeah, we're just uh, just walking back to the truck now. Close our curtains and uh, get dressed for the night. We've done uh, what we need to do in the services: pay for parking, toilet, wash hands, etc. Ooh, that car just scraped his alloy. I was just walking out and uh, I saw M&S and I thought, oh, I really fancy a milkshake. Don't know why. It's all good. Oh, someone's on the wacky backy. Oh, so yeah, we're just uh, just on a slow walk back from the services back there, and uh, we parked well over there. Um, oh, where's the gate? There it is. Thirty quid it's just cost me to park up here for tonight. That's without a food voucher. Thirty quid. I'll get that back because I put it down as an expense. I would have parked not in the service station if I could help it, but it's the only place I could park. Otherwise, it's all motorway the rest of the way. Right, we're just waiting for this truck. What's this truck doing? Because I want to cross. He's, uh, he's waiting. We're parked here. So, yeah, that's the puddle I stepped in on the way out. It's quite deep, that. Yeah, so we're back in the truck now. Just need to sort of stuff out. I've got stuff from the bed. I need to put away. That needs to go back over there. So just basically have a little tidy up. Everything that's on the bunk move forward so we can get into bed. Okay, I know you can't see me very well. Lights are off. Clothes are off, and no one wants to see all that. <laughs> um, I'm now going to bed. I will see you in the morning. The Essential New Truckers Handbook is a book aimed at new drivers who want to become part of the industry. This book will guide you through what to expect in the industry via its 28 chapters and will help you understand important rules and regulations such as driver's hours, loading and unloading, manoeuvring, and much more. This book also contains DVSA revision theory test questions and is a great read should you wish to gain some extra knowledge. The Essential New Truckers Handbook, updated and enlarged, available now. Link is in the description down below. Okay, morning everyone. Next day, it's Wednesday now, and uh, we're just around the corner from the delivery point. That sun is a little bit bright. Um, yeah, we are only a mile and a half away, and um, I had to make a phone call because I was looking last night and it says I've got to go to phase three. I googled phase three and it looks all complete, phase three. So this must be like phase four or something, I don't know. Um, so like it's literally a housing estate <laughs> and I didn't want to take an Arctic down a housing estate unless I had to. So I had to call uh, the guy this morning just to confirm where exactly he wanted it. it. Turns out it's not in the housing estate. So it's a good job I called, otherwise I would have went down the housing estate because that is where it says to go. Um, what I wouldn't have done is gone over a single track bridge that says unsuitable HGVs. That's what I wouldn't have done. That's what I've got to do. <laughs> um, I've, like I said, I have phoned him and he has said that is where I've got to go. So I've got to go over, uh, we've got to go down a lane. It's, ironically, it's called Luke's Lane as well. So I'm going to my lane. <laughs> I've got to go over a single track bridge and it says unsuitable for HGV. So Let's see what this is going to be like. Hopefully it's completely fine, but then there's a field on the left-hand side and it's in that field. Now, when we deliver these drainage sort of stuff, what I've come to realise, we've not been doing this that long, but this is like infrastructure for sites. It's like the first thing in, pretty much. Um, there's no roads, there's nothing. So it could be a muddy field for like no. Um, yeah. We'll have to wait and see. I do think it's going to take quite a while to tip because I've got all sorts on here, as, as you've seen and it'll probably all come off individually. Um, so I do think we are gonna be on site for a while. Uh, with regards to time, it's half past eight uh, currently. Um, I was aiming to get here for eight o'clock, but I thought I'll, I'll get here at half eight because then it gives me time to give them a, co a call and confirm exactly where I need to be. So that's why I've got here for half past eight. 
um, we should be good. Um, and looking on later on today, we, are, we actually already know what we're doing from here as well. We've got to go get loaded and it's got to go to, uh, to Wales. Um, so that's, uh, I don't know whether that'll be in this video or another video, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see on that one. So we want to turn right at this roundabout. We are literally going to go past the, the house and estate that I was going to go down as well. My sat nav says this is a roundabout up here, but it actually looks like traffic lights. And also a lot of people queuing up on the left, but we want to turn right. There we go, we've got a right signal now I'm going. All the cars are going straight on. I want to turn right, so taking advantage of it. Let's go down here. Sun's disappeared. Yeah, so we're going into a 20 zone now, so that means a lot of pedestrians and possibly children to look out for as well. There we go, we've got school children on the left already, so like I said, that'll be why it's a 20 zone. And down here is um, is the new build houses. And I originally thought I had to go into one of them, one of the lanes, but it turns out that's not the case. There's a pedal there. Move on over. Okay, yeah, so this is the, the new builds. And is where I thought I had to go. I thought maybe go down there, but he said no. He said go down here. He said ignore the unsuitable for HGV sign. Uh, I'm going to put the beacons on just because it says unsuitable. It doesn't look too bad actually. Apart from the low trees. It does still say unsuitable for HGVs. And he's giving me a dirty look. <laughs> that person that was giving me a proper dirty look. Over this bridge, there we go, let's on the left. That looks like a very muddy site. Jesus. I'm also not sure how I'm going to get in. Bloody hell. Jesus Christ. You move the fence. Got this bloke just uh to take a look. Such a tight left hand turn that I might take the fence out. I don't think they've had anything bigger than me in here. Well, maybe they have actually, because there's diggers in here. Don't mind the van on that side. Cheers, mate! Right, where do they want me? That's the question. <laughs> I got no idea. Right, the mirror situation really annoys me on this track because I got to you got to press it four times to get to the left. Oh, 
I don't know where they want me, but yes, this site looks very, very muddy. Very, very muddy. This looks like it's going to be fun. And, like I said, I think I'm going to be here quite a while. Right, let's go speak to someone and see where they want me. See you in a bit. Uh, I just got to clean my mirrors because uh, the sun is well and truly on it. This site is minging. I've got no idea if I'm on concrete or mud. This is literally one of the worst sites, muddy wise, I've been to. That here, What's that, mate? Just that yeah, no worries. You want me to go back a bit more, do you? How far back? Um, so, this would be in line with them bumpers there. Okay, yeah. Just because that's like a road in there. Yeah. So he's going to drive in there. So you want me to go straight back? Yes. Back and then he's going to come alongside you. No for me, I just can't see what's mud and what's concrete, all right? So just watch me back, or as I might sink. <laughs> like I said, from, from I can't see. Like he said it's all mud, but like I can't see if it's hard or not, so I'm literally just trusting him. It looks to be a little bit drier up here, potentially. How much drier? I don't actually know, but that's sun is right in my, my eye line behind me, so I can't actually see much. Okay. Get from there, mate. Brilliant. I'll uh, I'll start unstrapping. It's probably going to take me a good ten minutes, fifteen minutes to unstrap. So, so that's nah, fine. We can if you want, but like you don't have to. No worries. Right. Let's go in unstrap. Right. We are uh, we're getting there. Bless them. They were very kind enough to like help strap up, but half of them were done up wrong. So we've got to we've got to redo them up. The hooks. Uh, Need to be on the outside of the roll, not the inside of the roll. So when we throw the strap over, the hook stays in our hand. It doesn't hit someone on the head. Yeah, so basically it needs to look like that, not like that. So I just need to redo these. Um, yeah, they're very kind enough to help out. Only, only I think six of these were like this in the end, so not too bad. I'll just quickly redo them up. Yeah, so just like give you an understanding of how muddy this site is. Look, look at my shorts, um, my trousers already. We're, uh, we're right on the muddy bit. Not a lot we can do about it. Feet are already dirty. There we go, that's uh, slowly coming off. Actually, it's coming off quicker than I thought it was gonna come off. We're not actually gonna be that long. I think like another half an hour top, so I reckon we'll be out of here. And we haven't been here for long, like I've literally only just taken all my straps off. So, yeah, they're really doing it quickly. All right, paperwork is signed. We've still got a couple more lists to come off. Straps are all put away. I am filthy dirty. I've also got to scan this barcode or something to say I've done the delivery. Are you, oh, that's, a, that's annoying. You've got to scan it when you leave, scan it when you arrive, now wants me to scan it again, presumably to say I've tipped. Add delivery photo. Oh, we take a photo. There you go. There's a site. That's literally all you get in. <laughs> Finish. Who wants a signature? Well, they just signed this. I'm not giving anyone my phone, so I'm signing it. No one is having my phone but me. Especially on a dirty site like this, do you know what I mean? That makes sense. So I'm just putting in my destination of where I'm going to next. Destination at 955. 
And in my head, I was coming in from the opposite direction. Now I've seen there's a main road the other way, which makes more sense. And look on Google Maps, I can see there's tyre marks. I'm really muddy and dirty. There's not an awful lot I can do other than let it dry out and then clean up afterwards. M my boots are obviously muddy and my jeans are obviously muddy. And my socks as well, getting my boots off. So my floor is now also muddy. Let me show you. Yeah. Yeah, so my floor's muddy as well. It's all, it's like mushy stuff still, so I just need to let it dry and then give it a good clean later. So that's all I can do. It's a very annoying. Yeah, I'll just have to wait and give it a proper clean later. I assume when I come out of here, we turn left. It's a one-way street, isn't it? Let's go. Hopefully we don't get stuck coming out. I got my quiet horn on. <laughs> I had my quiet horn on. Right? Meep, meep. I was like, no, 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 no. Oh, we can't get out now. We actually can't get out because there's a high up here. So I think, yeah, he's only got one more to come off, look, so it shouldn't be too long. Uh, that's going to be quite tight getting out of that van. That van's ass is sticking out. Uh, might be alright actually, we'll see. If I keep the speed up, I can keep to the right a bit. Oh, Jesus Christ, I ain't getting out. There's a ranger in the way. I don't know if anyone has come in. <clears throat> I think someone's come in. But yeah, this isn't really suitable for for trucks to go in and out. They need to. They can't be having vehicles parked on the left because that's just going to in, inhibit any Arctic coming out. It's a bit annoying. But someone's come in, so I think that might be his. Cheers, mate. You alright, mate? Sorry? Yeah, how you doing? Do you know whose ranger that is? Oh, no, no, I don't. I'd say, I'm, I'm stuck like, until it moves. Yeah, and you see, I thought you were stuck in my white van. That white van's not your way, is it? Uh, no, the white van should be all right. It's just, uh, just the ranger. I, 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 I couldn't ask, I thought, do you know whose uh, ranger is? Well, you can help, No, so they don't know whose ranger it is. I've got a lorry behind me now as well. Frustrating. I'm gonna take my hoodie. Uh, my, uh, I was gonna take my high vis off. Actually, I might need to jump out. Looks like it might be his. Cheers, mate. Like I said, I think the mirror situation is on me. You got to press it three times to get to the left. I think we're just missing the the white van. There we go. It should be okay now I think. Oh, so annoying. so annoying because like you go to change i'm talking about the mirrors that's what one thing i don't like there's a, a single button where you select what mirror you want to change and i can press it and it, that's frustrating enough having to press it to get to the mirror you want and then you want to move it back again you've got to do it all over again because it's, it's forgotten which mirror you've landed on there's no way this road is ready for arctics to come down my trailer is going to have to go on the curb
no option but to on that one, unfortunately. Anyway, we're out of there. That was a very quick tip, very quick. Shame about the access, but you know, never mind. And my floors annoy me now because it's muddy and bitty. So I need to give that a wipe over when it's, uh, when it's dry. Green lights. Okay, we're out of there. We're out of there. Very, very dirty sights, but we got out of there. Uh, we didn't get stuck, so that's a bonus. Um, go in the wrong area and you would definitely get stuck on that site. Uh, if you if you went too far on one side, for example, then yeah, you would have definitely got stuck. So glad we didn't get stuck. That's good. Uh, we're going to make our way now to our collection point. We're 40 minutes away. We go get collected. We got a quarter and a half of fuel so that's plenty to get there plenty to get onto the motorway and then we can fill up fuel on the way down uh, and then we're going to wales delivery for tomorrow morning so um yeah there's no rush i think i don't think it's going to be a mega late night tonight depending on how quickly we get loaded um i don't know actually i don't, I don't know we'll have to see i, mean, I might be underestimating just how far away it is <laughs> um it could be quite a few fair miles we don't know um yeah we'd cross that bridge when we get there. So let's crack on to the collection point. I'll see you when we get there. Right, we are at our collection point now. Just waiting for someone to uh, come over to us. I have given him my uh, order number, but I'm just waiting for them to come over and actually start loading me. In the meantime, I'm just trying to clean my footwell. Like I said, it was really dirty earlier. It's looking better, but it's still not perfect. I've changed my trousers as well they were so dirty in my trousers I thought I better change them so I put new trousers on and they got dirty already because the boots they can see the boots are just still incredibly dirty might see if I can find a bit of grass over there and rub them on the steps are <laughs> filthy but at least footwell is a little bit cleaner now um, probably give it another clean later on the truck is minging man it wasn't even going fast, but it still kicked up mud, look. That's how muddy that place was. Jesus. Oh, I think I need a high vis on. Ah, found some grass. Just need to, like I said, <laughs> wipe my feet. This long grass is, just get some of it off. Okay, there we go. They look a bit better. They're still not perfect, but, Slightly better. Left some mud there for them. Anyway, we're starting to be loaded now. We've got, uh, I think you've got 16 of these going on. Eight either side, I think he said. So, better start strapping. Okay, I'm strapped up. I've also been told, I've been told that this is not a good load to take on a flatbed. And guess what we have? We have a flatbed. So these are quite tall. So straight away I thought I put two straps on each one, not one. So I put two straps on every single one. That's 16 straps, because there's eight pallets either side. And then on the back I crisscrossed. So you'll see that one there, it's going up, over, crisscross. Same on the other side as well. So basically what that does is, on the back it gives you a crisscross just to hold it in. Uh, yeah, I had one person tell me that it normally goes on a curtain cider, not a flatbed. I had another person come over to me, said, make sure you shut this up when you get down the road because it will shift. I had a, another, a third person come over to me, a driver, and said, bloody hell, you're brave, taking that on a flatbed. And then finally someone else came over and said, make sure you take them straps when you go down the road again, because it will shift. So I've had four separate people come over to me and tell me to be careful with this load. This could be a bit of a nightmare of a load. So, yes, unfortunately, that's the end of today's video. So, if you do want to find out what happens, uh, you might want to watch the next video, because <laughs> it could get interesting. So yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time, drive safe, stay safe. I will see you soon. See you in the next video. And uh, let's see if we can get this delivered successfully. Yeah.